Our scripture reading today is found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verse 2 to 4. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain, where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of His Holy Word. Good morning, everyone, and once again, welcome to Mandawi Gospel Church. I saw this funny cartoon, and uh, I decided to make a story around it. So here goes. Uh, there was this uh, mental health professional, and he was assigned to this new a building and he was there and he came to the utility guy and he asked this guy named George and said George do you know how to make signs for for the clinic and of course the the utility guy said sure doc no problem and he said I want it to be as big as possible so that everyone can see it and so true enough the doctor went into the clinic was while well, George was working outside and he stayed there for about half day. Nobody came in. And towards the afternoon, he was kind of surprised and worried. Like, how come nobody came to, uh, no patient came in? Nothing. So he decided to go out and have a look at what George was doing. And uh, if you will see the cartoon, and that was the reason why. <laughs> It says, psycho, the rapist. But it's supposed to mean psychotherapist. It's supposed to be one word. But in order for it to fit, George has to cut it into three words. And it meant something opposite altogether. Instead of a place where people can come and, and ask for counseling, it became a very scary notice. That psycho, the rapist, instead of psychotherapist you know English is a very 
interesting language and there will be times when we put the wrong punctuation marks in different places and it could mean a completely different thing and the point I have this morning is because as I was going through this passage this is about the transfiguration it is recorded in three Gospels now I just want to take two Gospels and compare them the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark if you will look at the Gospel of Matthew you will notice that um, chapter 17 where this event was recorded started with after six days Jesus took with him Peter James and John so so that was the start of the narrative but in the case of Mark it did not start there in the case of Mark it starts with something which was supposed to be at the end of Matthew's version so if you're going to look at Matthew and look at Matthew chapter 16 verse 28 it tells about I tell you the truth some of who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom that was supposed to be the end of it period and when we see this phrase or this verse a lot of things come to mind you would begin to see well maybe if we're going to see the son of man coming then probably it's meaning the second coming and does it mean that some of these people would live until the time so so some of these disciples will not die or something like that or does he mean something else because there were a lot of manifestations of, of Jesus power and so there was no direct answer because we're thinking that that was the end of the statement the end of the story and there's the period in the case of mark the transfiguration started with that verse so if you're going to look at mark chapter 9 verse 1 and he said to them i tell you the truth some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of god come with power and then the next verse after six days so uh, why is that so because uh, in in the 1200s that was the time when when they decided to put chapters and verses on the bible before that it was just a, a whole long narrative of of the whole life of jesus especially the gospels now the in the case of the jewish rabbis they already made some sort of a system with the torah but in the new testament it was different and once it was tr translated also to English um, this Archbishop of Canterbury um, Stephen Lang Langton uh, decided to uh, make a system where they have these chapters and verses and by putting uh, an end to the narrative in the case of Matthew the next becomes a completely different story it means like some sort of a disjointing there's no connection but in the case of mark it was different so what they did then was to put that end statement as the beginning which is chapter 9 verse 1 therefore with that we can see the continuation because the thing that sort of primes our curiosity is in verse 2 when it says after six days why would they say after six days if it was not part of the story itself see the the phrase after six days seems to join the previous verse to the succeeding verse so in the case of mark let's try to look at this i tell you the truth some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of god come with power after six days jesus took peter james and john with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone there he was transfigured before them so in this narrative in the narrative of mark we see then that what was intended on that verse about some of you um, will not taste death before you see the kingdom of god come with power points to the transfiguration now when we talk about transfiguration and uh, it means a change 
metamorphosis. And we know that metamorphosis is about how um, uh, the worm becomes a cocoon, and after a cocoon, it becomes a butterfly, something of beauty. And nature was intended to, to give this as an example so that people today can really understand what's going to happen. Now, the disciples were there. They were taken to this mountain. And as they were there, suddenly Jesus changed. The figure changed. Because when you say metamorphosis, his figure changed. It's not only that, that his garments became very white, but as I would like to assume, there would be some physical changes as well. So, Let's, let's continue on with the story in verse 3. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And I guess even today's laundry detergent could not do this. It's really, really white because it says whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Suddenly, it has become a supernatural phenomenon. They were just thinking, we're going up the mountain, we're going to have a good time. Maybe we go there to pray, some sort of, you know, that's what usual, Jesus usually does. Um, after he has performed some miracles, it takes time to go up, to be alone, to pray to the Father, and to give thanks, and to, to glorify the Father, and, and things like that. But Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. At this time, this guy was bubbling already. Why was he bubbling? Because he was so scared. And in Cebuano, we would probably say, Salimuang. Like Salimuang. He was so scared, he doesn't know what to say. And so he was saying, uh, uh, um, Master, I I'm going to build three shelters, uh, one for you, uh, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. So probably he wants to be on their good side because they know this is something supernatural. Uh, he doesn't want to uh, make them angry or, or uh, insult them. And so he just wants to show his respect. But you know what? Something else happened. And this farther terrify them. In the, in the version of Matthew, when this thing happened, they fell down on their face. And this is when a cloud appeared and enveloped them. And a voice came from the cloud and said, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Now, this clearly was addressed to them. It was not about addressing it to Moses or Elijah or to Jesus himself. This clearly was addressed to them. And so therefore, they were so terrified. Like, oops, they took notice of us. We're here. We're ordinary mortals. No, we're doomed. And so they just fell on their face and dared not look. So they, we don't want to look. It's so scary. Why? Because we already know when a sinful man he looks at God, he dies. And so he, they were so terrified, and so they just fell on their face. That was how Matthew narrated it. They fell to the ground, with, and, and then they were just there, not daring to look up. And then Jesus came and touched them and told them not to be afraid. And then when they looked up, it was only Jesus. He was back to his old self. There was nobody else there. No Elijah, no Moses, no God the Father. It was just them. And they were like, whew, we survived this. We survived this. And they were so terrified. You see, what happened here is a great reminder of who Jesus really was or is. If you will look at Psalms 104, as David was talking, he says, Praise the Lord my soul. He was writing this poem to give praise to God, to give praise to the Lord. 
Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent. See, he uses light like a garment. Isn't that very interesting? And when I read these things, I, I even begin to see like, truly David is prophetic in the way he explained things. Because that was what's going to happen later on with the Lord. What happened in that mountain? It, it showcased that there is a connection between heaven and earth, between God and man. Uh, let's try to go back a little bit and look at the story in Genesis chapter 28. In Genesis chapter 28, we remember that there was a time when Jacob was running away from Esau. And, and he was running to, towards his uncle Laban. And, and he came to this place and he slept there and he had a dream. And in that dream, there was a ladder, a stairway, and this was going to heaven and back to earth. And there were angels going up and down. And when Jacob woke up, he said, this is holy ground. Now, during that dream, God spoke to him. And he says, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Okay? Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Mind you, the offspring here is singular, it's not plural. And now we know what it's trying to tell us. That offspring, in the same manner as God said, that it will bruise. Remember what God told the serpent in the Garden of Eden about the serpent and the offspring. And in this, they would uh, be in adversity towards each other. But this particular offspring will bruise the head of the snake. So, this is kind of leading towards what is going to happen here. That place where Jacob had that dream, suddenly he realizes that there is a way to heaven. There is a way to heaven. And then in the future, blessings will be said in the name of his offspring. And true enough, if we're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verse 8, and there were shepherds at the time of the birth of Jesus. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Again, there is the glory, and this glory was shining, so it was very bright. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. So, uh, we are almost there, almost Christmas, and we will all be remembering this. But the most important thing is that there was this glory that was presented and shown. And this same glory we can see in the transfiguration. So, what happened in the case of Jacob was that he realized that that place was a holy place. And that place seems to have the gateway towards heaven because that's where the stairway was. Here in the Transfiguration, we see a more uh, improved version of that. And here we see not the place, but the person. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way. So it was not a gateway or a place where they use to pass but rather a person that we need to have in order to come to the father he says i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father except through me so this is jesus the gateway the way towards the father and this is what was shown here but not only that this also showed a glimpse of what is to come while the disciples were there, 
they were needed so that they can bear witness to this very thing. Not everyone was, of course, brought up there, but just the three of them. As Jesus was glorified, there was a change in appearance, and, and they were so terrified, yes. But it is not so much about thinking, what happened to Jesus then? Yes, that is very important. But the most important thing that all of us would have to consider as we read this is that what would happen to us also? Because the Bible already said that this is the first fruit. Jesus was the first fruit. He was raised to life. And the same thing is waiting for us. All who have committed their lives to Christ, have received the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, has this promise that we too would have the glorified body. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as, as what Paul wrote. In verse 42, So will it be with the resurrection of the dead, the body that is sown is perishable. In other words, it will decay. It is raised imperishable, so it becomes something that will not decay. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So this is the promise that we have, especially to many of us who are getting old. Ah, I would consider myself as also getting old. Not that old, but all of us are starting to feel the aches and pains, and we know the deterioration, and we have maintenance medicines and all these things. Our eyesight is not as good as it used to be. We cannot run as fast as we used to be or as long as we want. We know we are decaying. We are getting old. But there is this promise. There are people who are sick, who has to go through this illness and so many other trials in life. But again, there is glory that is waiting for us. And in verse 49 of the same chapter in 1 Corinthians 15, And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, that was Adam, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man, that is Jesus. The same manner as Jesus presented himself, glorified, transfigured before the disciples, is what is waiting for all of us. I like to watch trailers in the movie because I want to know what I'm going to watch. The trailer gives us a glimpse of what the movie is all about. And this is like that. It's a glimpse. It's like a small window where we can peek and see Jesus transfigured. Oh, that's what will happen to me too. That's what will happen to us, believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a very encouraging thing. It's something that can grant us hope and strength especially now as we face all these trials it will give us this blessed hope that someday we will be with Christ and we will be clothed in an imperishable body to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you very much Lord for loving us and for providing for this very important nuggets of wisdom. As we read your word, as it reminds us of what is waiting for us, Lord, we are encouraged and strengthened. And despite what we have to face today, all these diseases around us, the virus, and, and even an aging and decaying body, we are still thankful to you and praising you, Lord, because you have given us the hope and promise of a glorified body. A body that will last forever, a body where we can have a great time with you, enjoying. And we praise you, Lord, for this. Father, I pray that you will allow people to be reminded of this truth. Allow those that have not received you to make that decision. That they can have this hope themselves. If they will give their lives to Christ. If they will receive and believe in Christ. For you have sent your son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. 
And Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. And truly that is amazing and a great reminder and a great blessing for all of us. Lord, I continue to pray, Lord, for the physical needs that we have today. As we live groaning in this world, we continue to ask for your help. That for those who are suffering, you will provide relief. For those who are in pain, allow them to take this in stride and still believe that that hope awaits them. Lord, I pray for those who are down in terms of their profession, in terms of their business, in terms of their work. Some of them are really suffering and having problems. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen them. Help them to be encouraged that you who did not spare your son to come to save us from our sin is the same God who is aware of what we are going through. And you are a God who cares. Lord, I pray that you will continue to be with us as we go through this journey in life. And now, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen.